the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's rise up and pray. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. He's our God. Father, we want to thank you this morning. We have come to worship you because you are God. There's no argument about it. You are God. And we acknowledge you. We bow before you. We glorify you. Thank you, Jesus. Glorious God. Beautiful God. Oh, yes. Excellent God. We bow before your truth. Sing it now. Beautiful God. Excellent, we bow before your throne. That's what we are doing this morning. We bow before the Lord our God. He's our God. As we go to his word, you are going to bow to him. Listen to his word. And receive that word. And it will do you good. Father, we thank you. As we go into your word, Lord, we are praying that you yourself, by your spirit, not the word of man, but by your spirit, you speak to each and every one of us in Jesus' name. In the language that we understand, in the word that our hearts will hear in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please have your seat. God bless you today. Our message is titled, Indescribable Power of God. Indescribable Power of God. Can we say it together? Indescribable Power of God. That's what we are talking about today. In the beginning, God was there and ready to create the material world in which we live today. And he created everything out of nothing. That's why we are saying there's no argument. There's nothing. You don't have any other argument to bring. He created everything out of nothing. And the Bible gives us that revelation. God is the only one true God. Eternal self-existent God. You know what he says in, in Isaiah 57 verse 15? Isaiah 57 verse 15, he says, For thus says the high and the lofty one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and the holy place. That's God talking. This is, you can't say this if you're a human being. It's God. He said, I dwell. Thus says the high and the lofty one that inhabited eternity. God inhabits eternity. What is eternity? You don't know. Timelessness. That's all you know about eternity. But he is God and he inhabits eternity. Whose name is holy. And he said, I dwell in the high and the holy place. And with him also, that is of a contrite and a humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. The Lord will revive every one of us today in Jesus' name. God is self-existent. God inhabits eternity. He said so. He is all-powerful. We had the choir singing that. You can see that in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15, Daniel 4, 34 and 35. We're not reading all the scriptures. God is everywhere present. 
If you want to know that, read Psalm 139. Where will I go from your spirit? That's God. God is independent of his creation. I'm sure you know that. He is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. He is all-good. He is holy. He is righteous. He is unchangeable. We are talking about the God whom we come together every week to worship. He is perfect. And God is triune. Maybe you don't know what that means. God reveals himself in three distinct and interrelated personalities, Father, Son, and Spirit. God not only reveals his personality in the Bible, he also reveals his character and moral attributes. God is good. Amen? God is love. Amen? God is merciful. God is compassionate. God is patient. God is slow to anger. God is truth. If you want truth, it's God you are seeking for. God is faithful. God is just. In our message today, we will look at some of the indescribable power or display of the power of God as God revealed them through his word and how this affects us as believers today. Amen? And I believe the Lord will bless us with that word in Jesus' name. Now, in the next slide, I'm going to talk about God's power through his creation. You can see God's power through his creation. The limitless power of God can be seen through what God has created simply by speaking. How did God create things? Simply by speaking. We're going to read it very soon in Genesis chapter 1. If you open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1, we're going to read it. God spoke life into existence. God created everything ex nihilo. What does that mean? Not a big language. Ex. You, you know, if you know, if you have been speaking English, you understand that will not be difficult for you. When you say ex, it's outside, out of. External, outside. Ex, out. Nihilo, nil, nothing. Out of nothing. God created everything out of nothing. Just by speaking, and this is mind-blowing to use our present-day language. Everything out of nothing. And you need to learn a lot from this today because it will change your life. Let's read Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, here is the creative power coming into action. And God said, anytime God says something, please pay attention to it. You have your Bible, and it contains it. The Bible is the word of God. Pay attention to it. And God said, because when God says, whatever he says will come to pass. And God said, let there be light. What happened? And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. Light is good. If there was no light, if we came to the church this morning and the power has gone out and there's no light, you'll be struggling to see, even though the weather may be bright outside, Light is important. Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning was the first day. This is how God continued the creation with his word, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. And on the seventh day, he rested. God created the universe. In six days, 
Day one, he created light and darkness. Day two, he created the sea and the skies. Day three, he created the fertile earth upon which we dwell today and plant and grow things and eat. Day four, he created light for the day and night, the sun and the moon and all the stars. Day five, he created fish in the sea, herbs, trees, all the things that we can use to, you know, keep our lives going. Day six, he created animal and mankind. And finally, day seven, he rested. Praise the Lord. All these creation, we are done by the word of what we call logos. That logos is the word of God. The word of God. It is the word of life. That is life. When God speaks, there is life in the word of God. If God opens his mouth and speaks, there is life. That's why you have all this teeming life everywhere in the world. You and I are alive today. Have you ever asked yourself, why am I alive today? Because of the logos, the word of God. It's not just ordinary word. It is divine God speaking. And he spoke everything into existence. All life comes from God. Praise the Lord. Look at what it, Isaiah says. When Isaiah was thinking about this, Isaiah chapter 55, open your Bibles. I want you to always open your Bibles, please. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11 and verse 10 and 11, only two verses there we are going to read. God is saying, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, the Almighty is speaking here, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it to bring forth and board, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be which goeth forth out of my mouth. Eat shall not return to me void. Now, he's talking about the word of God. And you, as, we are, as we are speaking, please also be applying this to yourself. How does it apply to you? God is saying, so shall my word be which goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. This is the word of God. If ever God speaks to you, then you know that that thing God has spoken must come to pass. Praise the Lord. You know that if God ever opens his mouth and speaks, then that thing God has spoken must come to pass. And that's, that's what we are learning today. And it, it, that means a lot. That means a lot to us. That means a lot to you. You have a book in your hand. If you brought your physical Bible today, can, I, can you raise it up? Let me see. You brought your physical Bible. This book you have in your hand is the Bible, and it is the Word of God. The things God has spoken is here. God is saying, so shall my word be, which goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. Praise the Lord. If the Lord has spoken concerning me, that word will be accomplished. That word will never return to God void. That word is logos. That word is the creative logos, the word of God. It will come to pass. Praise the Lord. So this is the way. Look at John chapter 1, verse. Open your Bibles again. John chapter 1, verse 1. You will see the logos in action again. John chapter 1, verse 1. 
In the beginning was the word. Logos, word. The word of God. And the word was with God. This logos, this word was with God. It becomes even deeper. And the word was God. The logos, the word was God. That's why you should honor and respect and reverence. You reverence the word of God. You reverence what God has written. Because of what you read, the word was God. The word, the logos was God. The same was in the beginning with God, all things were made by him. All things were made by this logos, this word that is God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. In whom? In the logos, in the word. In whom was life. And that life was the light of man. Praise the Lord. And if you scroll down to verse 14 in your Bible, if you scroll down to verse 14 in your Bible, it said, and the word. Wow. This, 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 I pray that from today, as you read your Bible, you begin to see what God has been trying to communicate to you all these years. And the word was made flesh. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That word is Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. All things were made by this living word, this living logos of God, physically manifesting himself in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. This is the manifestation of the power of God. We are talking about the indescribable power. What we are hearing, some, it may be your mind, you are thinking, trying to understand this. Oh, how can you? The Lord gives us understanding. The Lord opens our eyes to understand. But that's it. We understand as humans whom God has spoken to. Beyond that, you cannot. Praise the Lord. God will give us the wisdom. All things we are made by the, God, by, by the world, physically manifesting in the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the power of God in action. This is the power of the almighty God in action. God created everything by speaking the word. If you can't see power there, then I don't know what else you are looking for. I don't know where else you will see power. God created everything simply by speaking. That word is life, and it gives life. The word of God is life, and it gives life. His word is more than the mere words of men. I may be speaking to you. You hear my word. You, yes, I communicate to you. You understand. Actually, even for me to be able to speak to you and communicate to you, I derive that from God because God put that in me. For you to communicate to me with words, you derive that from God. You got it from God. God put that in you. That's why you are able to speak. We need to understand all that today. The creative power of the word of God is very important to us as believers. Very important. Prophet Isaiah has a lot to say. A lot to say about the omnipotent power of God. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 10. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 10. Isaiah 40 verse 10. Oh, verse 12, Friday. Let me read it from verse 12. Just cut down the, the, the reading. Verse 12. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? He's asking who? And that is God. Number two, and has meted out heaven with a span. Number three, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure. Number four, and weighed the mountains in scales. Number five, and the hills in a balance. Isaiah is looking at creation. You don't know you, you don't know the you don't know the weight of the mountains. You don't know the span of the heavens of the universe. Do you know 
Yes, the science tells us there are so many planets, how many, but you don't know, there may be more. It shows that the Lord God, the power of God is incomprehensible. We can try. We can do everything we can to try to, to try to or comprehend the power of God. But the power of God is not very comprehensive. Verse 14. With whom took he counsel? And who instructed him? Who, with whom did God take counsel when he was creating the world? Who instructed him on what to do? Who taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding, you know that God, nobody taught him. God is God. He is knowledge himself. Behold, verse 15, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. The isles, all the nations of the world are as a very little thing in his hand. He said Lebanon is not sufficient to burn if he just wants to burn it as a sacrifice to God. Lebanon is a nation. If you want to burn that whole nation, include everybody, everything inside it, and burn them up as a sacrifice to God, if that were possible. He said it's not sufficient to be offered to God. Lebanon is not sufficient to burn. Nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Isaiah, in this lofty language, recorded the almightiness of God, and I hope you are seeing it. I hope you are seeing it through the word of God we are reading today, because it will change your life if you see it and begin to live with that knowledge that God has given to you. His almighty all powerfulness, his ultimate and eternal knowledge, the created universe, magnificent as it is, including all the human beings and angels, are nothing compared to him who made everything. He has measured the waters, he measured the heavens, he counted the stars. He weighed the mountains in scale. And that is not because he took counsel with anybody. There's nobody to take counsel with. He is God. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. No need to counsel, to, to, to receive counsel like created beings. And God is never weary and is never faint. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us instead he gives power to the faint. Amen? If you are looking for power, you can go to him and you receive power. After the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you receive power. Those who wait upon him will renew their strength. That's what the Bible tells us. You can grow stronger and stronger each day. Not just in physical strength, but also in your spiritual life in your service to God and in other areas of your life, if you attach yourself to God and begin to draw and derive strength from him, you will grow stronger and stronger every day. And Isaiah was not alone in his wonder. Elihu, the son of Barachel, the Bozite, was similarly struck in the book of Job, chapter 37. Chapter 37, verse 2, he says here attentively, the noise of his voice is talking about God and the sound that goeth forth out of his mouth. He directed it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. He's now describing when God allows rain to begin to develop and fall with thunder. You, you are in this country, maybe you, don't, you have not experienced thunder and lightning and heavy rain before, but if you are coming from Africa or from South America or some other part, you will know what rain is. Serious rain, heavy rain and thunder. You will know what it is. You can see where Elihu was speaking from. 
He thundereth with the voice of his excellency, and he will not say, stay them when his voice is heard. God thundereth mightily, marvelously, with his voice. Great things doeth he, which we cannot comprehend. God does great things which you and I, even till today, cannot comprehend. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he said to the snow, be thou on the earth, likewise the small rain and the great rain of his rent. And he sealeth up the hand of every man, that all men may know his works. All men may know his works. My question to you this morning, do you know the works of the Lord? Do you know the works of the Lord? Can you see the order that is in creation? Can you see how that the sun never fails to rise for one day in the east and set in the west for one day? It never happens. Can you see the order? Day and night have been keeping their allotted watch since creation without the loss of one second. Can you see the power of God? If the weather changes a little because of atmospheric conditions, man begins to cry. That's what happens. If the rain fails to fall in an area because of atmospheric changes, man begins to cry foul. But they have no care about the creator of it all. You must have care about the creator of it all. And instead, what man does is to make up their own gods. Or rather, they make themselves gods. But the great designer is our almighty God. Amen? The creator of the universe. All the gods are the works of men. The works of men, all creatures of the almighty God. The heavens declare his glory and the firmament shows his handiwork. Look at what Paul said in Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. Give thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of our sin, who is the image, Jesus Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn, that firstborn means the inheritor or the sovereign of every creature, for by him, watch it in verse 16 there, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. We are even talking about visible things. What about invisible things? What about the angels? You don't know about them, but they are there, created by the almighty God. So that when you are praying, you know, you have, you know whom, to whom you are praying and how to pray to him. He said whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things we are created by him and for him. And we agree with the Bible as it's rightly declared that the fool says in his heart that there is no God. After seeing all these things, and somebody will still stand up and say that there is no God. The Bible describes such people as foolish. Praise the Lord, you know God. Amen. Amen. You are not foolish in Jesus' name. Our existence proclaims that there is God. Order and fine-tuning of the universe proclaims that there is God. Even our own experiences show us that there is God. Amen? I'll go to the next point. God's power over his creation. God has power over his creation. We have read in Genesis chapter 1, the beginning of all creation. And can I, can I tell you this, and you might try to do this, young people and adults, you might try to do it. Genesis chapter 1 is worthy to be memorized. Genesis chapter 1 is worthy to be memorized. 
we see the omnipotent power of God displayed in creating the universe and everything in them. And God has power over everything he created. Remember that. He has power. That includes you and me. God has power over me and he has power over you because he created us. Praise the Lord. I, I pray that you understand this. If you understand this, you will be able to You'll be able to praise the Lord more. You'll be able to obey the Lord. You'll be able to do the will of God. He has power over us. And I mean, when, when we say that, you need to understand the implications and the ramifications and the depths and height of that. God has power over us. That means God can decide to do with us whatever he wants and there'll be no question asked about it. God can decide to take away, allow somebody to drop dead right here, right now, and nobody can ask questions. You know, human beings may start asking questions, but that question is useless because you are asking the Almighty God, the creator of everything, who knows more than you. Not even just knowing more than you. What do you know? You need to understand and know who God is. God has power over everything he's created. He has power over the sun and the moon. He can do anything. Oh, the sun has never stopped rising. It has never stopped shining since God made the world. If, the, if there's cloud here and you don't see the sun, that doesn't mean the sun is not out. No, the sun is already there, consistent. Go to another, another state, you will see the sun shining. It never stops. But can I tell you something? God has power over that element that is put in the sky. And he can stop it from shining. Actually, in actual fact, if he wants to do so, he can stop it from shining. He can stop the moon. He can stop the stars. He can stop the planets. He made them. And he put them in place. He put all the forces. You know what we are doing as scientists? We try to calculate all the forces that are holding things together. That's very good because God has given us the ability to... to Study the things he created. And that's all we can do. Praise the Lord. That's God. God controls everything. Even inanimate things. The beasts of the field. The fowls of the air. Everything is in his hand. There is no limit to God's power over his creation. This should make you happy if you, if you are a servant of God. If you are a child of God. It should make you happy. There's no limit to the power of God over his creation including you. No limit. Who can stand up against God's creation and tell him what to do and what not to do? Nobody can do that. It's a foregone conclusion, brothers and sisters, that God, we know that he can kill and make alive. Amen? Job, after losing all his property because the devil came to really fight him, he lost his property, he lost his livestock, he lost his children. You know what he said? He said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Brethren, that is what we must say every day. And I want us to say it together. Say it after me. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is the statement of a true worshiper of God. You must be a true worshiper of God. Be able to say that. This is a perfect reaction to the changes that take place in our lives every day. Certain things may happen. You are a child of God, worshiping God, doing the will of God. You are not sinning against him. You are making effort to do the will of God. And certain things will happen to you in a particular way. What will you say? The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, we thank God because in the end, Job saw that God was omnipotent and has power to do anything because God restored unto him more than the things that he lost and he never sinned against God you will never sin against God in Jesus name when Pharaoh of Egypt Egypt in those days was such a powerful nation 
and they were taking everybody into captivity. They took Israel, the Jewish people, into captivity. And they stayed there for 430 years. When he became stiff-necked, God told Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should let Israel go? I know not the Lord, and I'm not letting Israel go. That's what he said. That's exactly what Pharaoh told Moses. He said, who is the Lord? You will never ask such a question in Jesus' name. That was terrible. That was terrible. Who is the Lord? And I cannot let Israel go. And he was stiff-necked. He refused to free the children of Israel from slavery. God struck that nation and took away what he had given to Egypt. Egypt and Pharaoh did not know that their existence depended upon God. That God has their existence in his hand. Can I tell you this morning, do you know that your very existence is in the hand of God? Many people come to church, but they don't know God, and they don't know how to worship God. They don't know that their very life is in the hand of God. Look at Exodus chapter 12, verse 29. Open your Bibles. We're going to, we're going to see things today. I want you to see things See the power of God. Indescribable. You cannot describe it. Exodus chapter 12, verse 29. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn of the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh. Pharaoh telling God, Moses, who is the Lord? That I should let Israel. I know not the Lord. And I will not let Israel go. And look at what happened. After so many plagues and he was still hardening his heart. Please don't harden your heart before God. Amen. Don't harden your heart. Don't be like Pharaoh at all. Don't be never. Never be like Pharaoh. And it came to pass that at midnight. The Lord. This is not just some plague somewhere. This is the Lord. The Lord smote. The Lord can smite. The Lord can kill. You know, don't, 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 you need to understand the Bible. Don't think, you know, people always think that God is good. God cannot do that. Oh, when you are preaching to people, they will say to you, eh, how can a, a loving God, <clears throat> we say that God is love, how can he send people to hell? Can you, can you close your mouth? Because you don't know the scriptures. You don't understand the scriptures. God is in charge and is the owner of everything. And there's nobody can question who can question him. What are you doing? And Pharaoh attempted to do that. And this is what happened. Verse 30. And Pharaoh rose up in the night. He and his servants. And all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt. There was a great cry in Egypt. For there was not a house where there was not one dead, there was not a house, including the house of Pharaoh. Pharaoh's son died in this situation because of his obstinacy, because of his inability to obey and listen to God. Please don't be obstinate when you come to the word of God. Never be obstinate. That's what happened. His own son died. And all the firstborn from everywhere in Egypt, one person's sin can cause the destruction of many. That is what happened there. And they died. And he called Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up, rise up, and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord. Serve the Lord, the Lord that you didn't know. Go, serve the Lord. Serve the Lord as you have said. Also, take your flocks, take your hearts as you have said, and be gone. Take everything. I don't want you to leave anything behind. Be gone. And bless me also. Can you imagine that? Bless me also. That's, that's medicine after death, as they used to tell us. Bless me after, bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. We are talking about the power of your God. 
the power of the Almighty God, the one whom you are, have come to worship this morning, who came in the person of Jesus Christ to bring salvation to every one of us on earth, the God whom you worship, do you know him? Can you relate to him in this way? And his power will be released upon you. And nothing can stand in your way. That's what we are talking about. You know, this was both shocking and devastating to Pharaoh. He was humbled. He didn't need to have resisted the commandment of God. You don't need to resist the commandment of God, brother or sister. Please, don't resist the commandment of God. As a believer, you don't have a problem with what happened in Egypt, do you? No. That's the judgment of God. The people of Egypt are God's creatures. I said to you that God has control over everything that he created. You know what he told Moses? When Israel came out of Egypt, and as soon as they came out, they carried on with the idolatry that they were worshipping in Egypt. God was angry. He said, Moses, let me alone. I am going to destroy these people, and I will make of you another nation. And Moses bowed down before the Lord and said, Lord, please, sorry. Please, Lord, don't do that. Don't do that, because if the Egyptians will hear it, and they will say that the Lord was not able to take them into the promised land as he promised. And God was merciful and allowed them to carry on. He said, listen, you are a stiff-necked people. You take them, take them to the land. Don't be a stiff-necked person. Amen? Amen? Don't be a stiff-necked person. Don't be a stiff-necked person. Just like the children of Israel, we are all even Pharaoh. If God wanted, God could bless you at any time. Amen? And increase you and multiply you at any time. Amen? What if he decided not to do so? Do you have a problem with that? I'm asking, do you have a problem with that? No, if it is God, you don't have a problem with that because that is God. He has the power. Oh, we sing the song, who has the final say? And we know it's Jehovah. He has the final say. Not you, not me. I don't have the final say. You don't have the final say. God has the final say. Do you, how do you see God? I want to sensitize you once again. How do you see God? How do you treat his word? How do you treat his commandments? Do you obey him? You know, sometimes we play with our faith in God. We take a lot of things for granted. And God is just leaving us without, he's just leaving us. When God rises up to act, he acts. And nobody can ask any question about it. Pharaoh and his men were like the unsaved people of today. Godless people. When God delivered Israel with a strong hand, Egyptians couldn't even stand it. Remember? Even after they went out of Egypt, they couldn't stand it. They got angry. Pharaoh, why did you leave these people to go free of charge? Send your soldiers. Destroy them. That's the way God, the world thinks. And in Exodus 14, you know what happened? We're not reading it. In Exodus chapter 14, their whole army under the command of Pharaoh, went in pursuit, in pursuit of the children of Israel. And they met them at the brink of the Red Sea. I'm sure you have read your Bible. They met them at the brink of the Red Sea. And there we can see the drama that was unfolding. Because this Pharaoh and his people, I don't think they, are, they, they don't really know the Lord exactly. God sent an east wind. Praise the Lord. I mean, this is, this is the way God... He sent... Because his intention... Remember, what, what did I read to you from the beginning? He said, God said, so shall my... Isaiah 55. So shall my word be 
which goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. God has purpose that the children of Israel were going to leave Egypt. There is no obstacle anywhere in the world or in heaven even if all the angels of heaven were to rebel and want to stand against the purpose of God, that purpose of God will come to pass. Amen? And Pharaoh and his people rose up. They want to fight. And you see the drama. God sent an east wind that blew all night and created a highway in the Red Sea. Have you heard about that before? Have you seen that happen anywhere else before? This is the first place. It ever happened. He created a highway to, and Israel passed over through the dry land. But the Egyptians, when they saw this, they attempted to pursue. What happened to them? That's how your enemies will be drowned. They were all drowned. All of them. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 1. Open your Bibles to read this one. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 1. Proverbs, Proverbs 29, verse 1. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. This is what happened to Pharaoh and Egypt. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck. Please take this word to heart yourself. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Make sure you are listening to this word and taking things down. Don't miss what we are saying today. If you miss things, you are going to have a problem because it means you will not understand the way God is working. He that being often reproved had met his heart shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Job chapter 36. Open your Bibles again. We are reading a lot of Bible today because that's, that tells us about God and what God is doing. It's not my word, but the word of God. Job chapter 36, verse 6. Job 36. If you, if you, I'm sure you know where Job is. After Job, you have Psalms. But Job chapter 36, verse 6. He preserveth not the life of the wicked. God will never preserve the life of the wicked. Well, that's a, that's a Bible. But giveth right to the poor. He withdraweth not his eyes from him, from the righteous. That's talking about you today. God will not withdraw his, if you are righteous before the Lord, he will not withdraw his eyes from you. His eyes are upon you. But with kings are they on the throne. The righteous are with kings on the throne. You will be on the throne in Jesus' name. Yea, he doth establish them forever, and they are exalted. And if they be bound in fetters and beholden in courts of affliction, then he showeth them his work and their transgression that they, may, they have exceeded. He openeth also their ears for this, to discipline. As you are learning this morning, you are going to begin to listen to the discipline of God and commanded that they, they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, this is for you. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Say amen. amen. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword. That's what happened to Egypt. And they shall die without knowledge. Egypt and all their armies, they died without knowledge because they don't know God. God has and reserves the power to kill and to bring the dead back to life. You must acknowledge that all the time. Amen? He has that power and he reserves the power to kill anyone, anybody. Don't tell me how can a loving God send people to hell. Who are you to, to even ask such a question? Do you know who created all those people? Do you know how, from what material he made them? You don't know. So you cannot really ask. 
Praise the Lord. Please, can you stop talking at the back? Pay attention here. Pay attention, please. I don't want distraction. Everybody is paying attention. So he reserved the power. He reserved the power to kill and to bring the dead back to life. You know, Jesus laid hands on the body of the dead son of a wid the widow of nine. And that child, that young man, came back to life. Amen? Amen. He came back to life. That's the power of God. God has power, power over his creation. If something happens to you today, God can lay hands on you and that thing will change. Say amen to that. Because he has power over his creation. When Lazarus died, the Lord Jesus restored him back to life. Four days after he died and was buried, he called him. Lazarus, come forth. That's the word of God. What word was speaking? It was the Logos. The word that has power. The word that is life. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. That's the Logos. Praise the Lord. Lazarus came back to life. And Jesus cast out demons and delivered those who were oppressed by them. There's, there's nothing difficult for God to do. He cast out demons. He cast out a legion of demons from a particular person. That man from the gatherings. The demons that were in him were described. They, they said they were legion. And in those days, in those days, the Roman legion, army, the Roman legion, we're talking about 4,000 to 5,000 men. That's what is described as legion. So this man had so many devils inside him. And he was, he couldn't, no matter how much chain you bind him with, he would just break them. It's not his power. The power of those demons that were inside him. And the Lord said, come out of him. And you know what happened. And the man, emit, all those demons left him. And they entered into a swine. And there were thousands of them. And they rushed into the sea. And they were destroyed. God has power over his creation. And the power of God over his creation is beneficial to you and me today. It's beneficial to you. And to me, it's beneficial to those who seek him daily. Beneficial to those who cry to him. Do you cry to the Lord? Do you seek the Lord and cry to him? His power over his creation is beneficial to you. His creative power will work for you. Say amen to that. Even his destructive power will work for you. Oh, you are saying, ah, Pastor, what are you saying? Destructive power. Oh, yes. The destructive power of God can work. Do you know God has both creative and destructive power? Oh, of course. If there is any sickness in you, that sickness is destroyed by the destructive power of God in Jesus' name. The destructive power of God is important as well as the creative power of God. When the children of Israel murmured in the wilderness for what to eat and what to drink, and they forgot the power of God. You will not forget the power of God in Jesus' name. They forgot the power of God that delivered them from Egypt. Look at the deliverance from Egypt. God delivered them. You know, God decided to help them. He sent them thousands of quails. Quails are birds. And they just came and filled the camp, and they were not flying away. So the children of Israel were just picking the birds, as many as you want to eat. Since you have been crying to God for meat, 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 God gave it to you. And in fact, at the point, it was said that uh, they would eat the thing and it would come out of their nostrils. Because there's a Lord. God sent a Lord. But they were complaining. You will not complain in Jesus' name. You will believe God. And not only that, he sent them manna. Manna. That thing that looks like wafer. 
And how, do you know how many, how, how long they ate manna? 40 years. Every day, apart from the Sabbath. 40 years. Where was it coming from? Praise the Lord. You don't know. They themselves, got, in fact, the word manna means, is what? That's the Hebrew, that's what it means. They didn't know what to call it. They, would, they would said, what? What is this? What is this? They didn't know where it's coming from, but it was coming from God. For 40 years, when they entered into the promised land and they ate the food and all the things in the promised land, the manna ceased. You know, God can provide. Listen, if you understand who God is and you follow him, God can provide for you. Amen? And you don't need to, you don't need to worry where it's going to come from. You don't need to know how he will do it. It's not that you're going to be lazy or indolent. No, the children of Israel were not lazy. They were not indolent. They were doing the will of God, walking, going to the wilderness. And the Lord knew how to provide for them. You know, the world today cannot imagine such miracles. But what opportunity we have as believers to show the world the power of the Almighty God. As we go through the scriptures, we read his word, we understand what he's saying, and we obey it, and we see his hand coming upon our lives. That we want to show the world. From today, you need to believe God and begin to practice and act as a child of God until the power of God begins to walk through you. And the world will see it and marvel. The world will see it and marvel. Praise the Lord. The world will see it and marvel. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, verse 16. Thus says the Lord, which make it a way in the sea. He will make a way in the sea for you in Jesus' name. And a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and the horse and the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. Isaiah is re re reflecting on what happened in Egypt. They shall not rise. Your enemies will not rise in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. They are extinct. Your enemies will go extinct in Jesus' name. They will, you, you, will see, you will seek for them, you won't find them again. They are quenched. They will be quenched in Jesus' name. And the Lord says, don't remember them anymore. Remember not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. When the Lord has answered your prayer, he will renew your life in Jesus' name. I will do a new thing. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. Maybe you are walking in the wilderness today. You are still, your life is like somebody walking in the wilderness. God said he will make a way for you. But you have to follow him. This is not, we are not just simply declaring this. You have to follow him. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me. The dragons and the owls. Because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. To give drink to my people. That is whom God gives this. If God is going to make a way in the wilderness, he's going to make it for his people. You must be a person, a child of God. You must belong to him. For these things to happen. My chosen. That's what he said. And in chapter, chapter 41 verse 17. Isaiah. Chapter 41 verse 17. When the poor and the needy. Seek water. And there is none. And their tongue fell it for thirst. It can happen. I the Lord will hear them. Praise the Lord. I the God of Israel will not forsake them. Say Amen. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valley. Say amen. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water in Jesus' name. That's the word of God. I will plant the, in the wilderness the cedar, the shita tree, the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree. The, the Lord is talking about fruitfulness, luxuriant, you know, foliage that can help you, that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this and the Holy One of Israel has created it. Praise the Lord. God will not forsake those who cry to him. Amen. 
Maybe you've been crying to the Lord. You've been saying, God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? He will not forsake you in Jesus' name. He will not forsake you, but you must not forsake him. You know, I can say all the nicest things to you when I'm preaching. You know, I don't want to be negative. I want to preach so that you can receive the word of God, which is very good. But you must, you must follow God. If you don't follow him, if you don't want to listen to him, how, how are you going to receive his blessings? If you don't want to obey him, if you're not obeying his word, how are you going to receive his blessings? If you're always disobeying him, always going your own way, doing your own things like, like Pharaoh and Egypt, how are you going to receive all these blessings? These blessings are meant for those who love him, who follow him, who obey him, listen to him. And I want you to be part of it. I myself want to be part of it. Praise the Lord. God will not forsake those who cry to him day and night. If you are one of such people, God will not forsake you. Amen? In Luke chapter 18, verse 1, Luke chapter 18, and he spoke a parable to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. How do you receive blessings from God? You will pray and not to faint. I don't know if anybody has gone to that length before. I don't know if any of you in the church has gone to that length where you prayed and prayed and never, you refused to faint. Oh, so nothing is happening. You carried on. Nothing is happening. You carried on. You look up in the sky. Not, there's no, no cloud. You are carrying on. You are praying, praying. Go again. Look at the sea. What is happening? Nothing. Go again seven times. You look seven times. Nothing. Maybe the final seven times there seems to be a little bit of movement. Meanwhile, the Lord has been listening to your prayer. He wants to bless you, but he wants you to be consistent. In fact, God wants you more than the blessing you want from him. You didn't understand that. God, I wouldn't say God wants you. He's, he's, God wants you. He wants to, that's why he sent Jesus for you. He wants you. I wouldn't say God needs you in the sense that he, as if God needs something. It's for your benefit that God actually wants you more than the blessing you are looking for from him. The moment you can hand yourself over to, forget about the blessings, they will come. They will come in multiple numbers. When you give yourself to God, when you submit yourself to God, when you begin to tell God, God will look at you and you know, yes, this person, there's, there's no question, he loves me, he, she loves me, he wants to serve me, and he's ready to do that. When God sees that, when God sees that, there's nothing that will be impossible for you, because he will be there to see everything. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. In this parable, I don't want to read it, the Lord Jesus told his disciples, he said in verse 7, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them, even though it may appear to be nothing is happening, will God not avenge them? He said, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. The Lord said God will avenge you speedily if you are ready to submit yourself and keep going and keep going and keep going. Keep. That's what the Lord wants. You will do it in Jesus' name. So when we want to see you in church, come. Don't stay at home. I, I used to look for many of you during the week. I won't see you. Where are you? You are walking, going here and there. But you want to see this power of God we are reading about today. You think it's going to happen in your life. How is it going to happen? There's commitment needed. And God will see you that you are committed. And then the power of God will begin to manifest in you in Jesus' name. There is no limit to the control that God has over what he has created, including you and me. Because we can see it. If he wants, he can create a highway in the ocean. He can calm the fiercest hurricanes that Jesus did. Peace, be still. And the storm ceased immediately. He can feed multitudes, multitudes. Five loaves and two fishes he will feed 5,000 people. He can heal the sick doesn't matter how sick they are. Are you sick today? God can heal you. The sickness and the name of it does not matter. 
before the Lord. Because remember, God, he uses his word to create. If you are looking for health, God will use his word to create health in your life. That's what God can do. There's nothing impossible for him. He can control the elements or even suspend their power. He can suspend their power. Oh, why can't God suspend the power of the elements? Why can't he suspend? Look at when Jesus walked in. The, what do you think was happening when Jesus walked upon the water? What do you think was happening? God suspended what, you know, water has a particular weight. It works, you know, the properties of it. God suspended the property and he walked upon the water. Praise the Lord. And when God wants to deal with your situation, he will suspend everything that will prevent it and bring that thing to pass in your life in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's just go to this slide and then we, we try to close. God has power. God's power can be found in his creatures, in you and me, and other created beings of God. That is power. Every human being has the potential, untapped power, to achieve the greatest things in life. Look at it happening now. Look at those who are ruling the world. Are they not human beings? They were born like you. They breastfed them like you. They toddled like you. And they grew up like little children like you. But now they are ruling the world. God gave them the ability. They couldn't do that if God didn't give it to them. Praise the Lord. God has given us power. We have power. Power to reproduce ourselves. That's why you can have children and multiply, increase and multiply, God said, and replenish the earth. And it's given not only to human beings, but to even to plants. That's the power of God. And you can see that in Genesis chapter 1. We're not going to read Genesis chapter 1, verses 24 to 28. And after this, God saw everything that he did, and behold, it was very good. Everything God created was very good. God created people male and female. Today, people are fighting against this. They are fighting against this command of God, this fear, this genetic coding. This is called genetic coding. God coded us in this way. I am standing here as a male speaking to you because of genetic coding by God. There's no other way you can get it. There's nothing else you can do. Men are abusing the power that God has conferred upon them. Using those powers for destructive purposes. Using them to oppose the purposes of God. You know, just like you can use the result of nuclear fission, those of you who did science, to produce electricity and power, to light cities and to run machinery, and to bring benefit for human beings. In a similar way, you can use the same knowledge to create nuclear bombs that if you drop them in one place today, they will destroy the whole of humanity. That's how God, God allows human beings to have power. He gave it to them. He gave it to them, the power to discover these things, and you need to know how to use your power. Praise the Lord. The Lord can use his people to do things. Moses, God commanded Moses to stretch his hand over the Red Sea and divide it. That's all the command God gave to Moses. God didn't say, Moses, pray to me, pray to me. No, no, no. Stretch forth your hand over the sea, over the sea, and divide it. And Moses obeyed. You will obey God in Jesus' name. Even if the command appears to be I don't understand, Lord. No, don't say that to him. If he commands, just go and do it. Stretch forth your hand and divide the sea. Moses obeyed, stretched forth his hand. The Lord, it's not because Moses had the power in him, but the Lord, the Lord acted on the obedience and faith of Moses. The Lord will act on, on your obedience and faith in Jesus' name. He stretched forth his hand, and as soon as Moses stretched forth his hand, the Lord sent an east wind that blew all night, and that blew all night and created a highway in the Red Sea, and the children of Israel passed across. 
God has power and can allow you to operate, manifest that power. Amen? Manifest that power. God will manifest his power in us in Jesus' name. When we read what we read, we can see that this uncommon power of God is still available today. It's not, it's not, it's not uh, extinct. It is still available. Let me give you one more example. Joshua was fighting the battle of God. People that we are fighting against the children of God. He was winning, but the day was about to close, and he wanted to finish that battle before the sun goes down, and he went to speak to God, and Joshua spoke to God. I don't know how you will speak to God today, even after this, and Joshua went to speak to God, and Joshua and asked God for permission, and God agreed. Joshua came out, and he said to the son, son, stand still in this valley and moon stand still and what happened they obeyed why were they obeying because that was that permission has been given by God when God gives you permission nothing can prevent what he wants you to achieve amen and you need to get to a point where you can receive permission from God When we stand for God, a lot can happen. A lot can happen. God can release uncommon privileges for you. Praise the Lord. There are so many things to read, but I don't have time to read all of them. I'm just going to scroll to try to complete it today, and you can pray. You can pray from what we have been reading since. I'm sure you know that there is nothing in the realm of impossibility as far as God is concerned. There is nothing. If, you ever, if that word impossible, it does not apply to God at all. In fact, it does not even apply to true believers. Because Jesus says, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Nothing shall be impossible to you in Jesus' name. I just want to summarize with the last slides there. How does this apply to you and me? How does it apply to you and me? You can be like the heroes of faith. You can be like Abel who offered an acceptable sacrifice to God. Anything you do for God, God will accept it. You can be like that. You can live your life in such a way that anything you do for God will be acceptable. You can be like Enoch. Enoch who walked faithfully with God for 300 years and he was not. You can, with the power and the presence of God in you, you can achieve that. Amen? Amen. You can be like Noah. Noah, who by faith built an ark to preserve his family when God decided he was going to destroy the world. You can be like Abraham. You can be like Abraham. Abraham who obeyed God. They called him, Abraham, come up and get out of your country. Go to another place. Abraham obeyed. And the Lord made him the heir of the world. Praise the Lord. And there are so many, so many, so many other people. We don't have time to see all of them. You can read them yourselves in Hebrews chapter 11. And let me close by showing you what Jesus said concerning you and me. In Mark chapter 11 verse 22. Let's read this and we're going to pray. Mark 11, 22. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. After all these things I've preached to you today, what are you going to do? Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Do you have faith? Many of us say we have faith, but actually we don't have faith. Have faith in God. 
have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, you, that's you, you are the whosoever, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. That's all the command you are going to give. But when you give that command, what does God say? And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. The word is speaking, the logos. You are speaking on behalf of God. Be thou removed, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. What happens? What happens, George? He shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore, Jesus concludes, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Praise the Lord. You shall have them in Jesus' name. And in fact, the Lord even said that nothing shall be impossible to you. If you believe that, say amen. amen. That you can see. We don't want to read it. There's a lot of, you can read them. Matthew chapter 17, verses 19 to 21. It says, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. If you have faith, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, as we are going to pray, nothing shall be impossible to you. Say amen to that, oh. Amen. Maybe, maybe you are reading the Bible like a literature, like a novel, and the way you read, nothing shall be impossible to you, you just let it pass. You don't know that it's something that God is talking concerning you. Is it true? Have you come to that level where nothing is impossible to you? Have you? The Lord said you should rise to that level. Let's rise up now, and we are going to pray. You have to rise to that level where actually nothing is impossible to you. I want you to now lift up your voice to the Lord. You want to lift up your voice to him and begin to thank him because of the fact that you can see who he is. Who he is. You can come out of every weakness that has held you hostage this afternoon. You can come out of it Whatever the weakness may have been in your life. It could be a weakness in sin. You cannot overcome sin. You are always falling back, falling back. You can come out through the power of God. You come out of the weakness today. You can come out of that weakness. Anything that has held you hosted, you can break that weakness today. You can come out of every form of prayerlessness that has made you powerless. Because when you are prayerless, you are powerless. You can come out of every prayerlessness that has made you powerless this afternoon. Why don't you pray? Pray. Pray. Don't worry, pray. Pray. Sometimes we can stay longer in church. Pray. Don't worry. Don't be rushing. Where are you going? Where are you going to? You are going home to eat food and relax and sleep and wake up. What else are you going to do? Pray. And bring a change in your life. Bring a transformation in your life. Let God change you. Come out of everything, every non-commitment that makes the promises of God to become of non-effect in your life. When you live a life and you are not committed to God, every promise of God, they will not be, they will not be effective in your life because God sees you are not committed. But come out of that. Pray today. And the Lord will cause you to commit yourself to him. And then his promises will come to pass in your life. Come out of every lifestyle. Every lifestyle that negates the power of God in you. There is awesome power of God in the life of every believer that is obedient to the Lord. Come out of every lifestyle that will negate that power in your life. Come out. Come out. Things will change today. Come out. Those mountains will move today. You come out of that situation. Come out of every association that saps your faith. You know, sometimes we are believers, but we are associating ourselves with all kinds of external things that will be sapping our faith, removing our faith from us. Come out of such. Come out of such. And resist every doubt every doubt in your mind that holds you hostage, every doubt, 
come out of it, resist it, resist it, resist every temptation, resist every temptation that wants to weaken you and drag you down. There are temptations that want to weaken us and drag us down. And raise your faith to, in God to the highest alert level. Raise your faith in God to the highest alert level. Raise it. This afternoon, raise it. Raise your faith and believe him. Believe him. Believe him. I don't know what you are praying for. Whatever you are praying for that you need from God, believe him. Raise your faith to the highest alert level. Raise it high. And God will make a way for you. God will make a way for you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Pray, pray, pray for yourself. Just pray for yourself. Pray and remove everything that will hinder you. Everything that has hindered you. Every weakness that has, you know, you know, made you, made you so, so weak. Pray and pray to the Lord and tell him, Lord, you said that all things are possible to me. You said nothing shall be impossible for me. Let it happen today. Leave this church today with the assurance, with that assurance. Leave the church today with the assurance that God has had you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Call upon him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Timothy, come and round up before we pray for some people. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Everlasting Father, we want to thank you. Bless your name this morning. We thank you for how you have opened our eyes to this part of the scripture. We thank you for how you have helped us to know that you have all the power to do and to undo. We thank you for how you have uplifted our faith this morning. We are praying and asking, oh God, that from this day, we'll start walking in the newness of that power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatsoever mountains that have been standing before us, you have made us to understand through your servants that those mountains with us releasing the word, trusting you by faith, you will cross every mountain in the name of Jesus. Amen. The sicknesses that have been there, Lord, through your destructive power, you take them off in the name of Jesus. As your children leave this place, we are praying and asking that they are not living in your presence. But may your presence continually go with us in the name of Jesus. Your servant that you have used, much have gone out of him. Lord, anoint him the more, strengthen him the more, so that when he's called upon next time to preach your word, you will give him more grace to release the word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before we share the grace together, are there are people that uh, we need to pray for. Please come forward if you are, and then we're going to pray for you. And then we share the grace. Well, let's lift up our hands for the final blessing. The Lord bless and keep you in Jesus' name. And the Lord make his face to shine upon you in Jesus' name. The Lord lift up his countenance on you in Jesus' name. And the Lord grant you his peace throughout this week in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.